Good day, students. Welcome to mathgoodserve.com. This is lesson 2.1 of our AccuPlacer prep series. We are going to be focusing on fractions today, how to reduce them, classify them, and carry out decimal to fraction and fraction to decimal conversions. All right, so for our classification, the instructions are as follows. Classify the given fractions as equivalent, proper, improper, mixed numbers, on the find or indeterminate fractions, okay? This is kind of like a vocabulary review. So 1a, what if we have the fraction 3 over 2? What kind of fraction is this? This right here is an improper fraction, okay? Why is it an improper fraction? It's an improper fraction because um, the numerator 3 is greater than the denominator, okay? So because uh, 3 is greater than the denominator, which is 2. B, what if we have the fraction um, 5 over 12? What kind of fraction is this? This is a proper fraction, okay? Why is this a proper fraction? It's because the numerator 5 is less than the denominator 12. Now, what if we have the fraction, um, let's say we have the fraction 5 over 0. What kind of fraction is this? This is undefined, okay? This is undefined. The reason why it's undefined is because you have 5, which is not equal to 0, being divided by 0. Any non-zero number divided by 0 is undefined, okay? Now, how about this fraction right here? What if we have 0 divided by 0? Now, this is an indeterminate fraction, indeterminate. Why is it indeterminate? Anytime you have 0 divided by 0, you have an indeterminate number. All right? Now, let's take a look at another example. What if we have 5, 2 over 7? This right here is a mixed number. Why is it a mixed number? It's a mixed number because you have a whole number. Because you have a whole number... Uh, plus a proper fraction. All right, so that's why this number right here, um, 5, 2 over 7, that is why it is a, uh, a mixed number. Okay, now what if we have a, a collection of fractions, 5 over 25, uh, 1 over 5, and... Um, 3 over 15. What kind of fractions are these? These are known as equivalent fractions. All right? Why are they equivalent fractions? Because they all have the same reduced form. Because they all have the same... The same reduced form of what? The same reduced form... of 1 over 5. So if you reduce all these three fractions, you end up with 1 over 5 as its lowest term, okay? All right, let's go into um, reduction of fractions. Now, before we take a look at some examples, let's go over the strategy for reducing fractions, okay? There are two uh, different ways um, you can uh, reduce fractions. One is by decomposition. The second is by using the GCF. I'm going to be going over the decomposition approach here, but if you've mastered the GCF um, cancellation algorithm, you can as, um, implement it as equally as effective as this one, okay? So the strategy is as follows. First of all, you decompose the numerator and the denominator into a product of primes, okay? Prime factorization using your uh, factor tree. Secondly, you divide out common factors between the numerator and the denominator. 
And then lastly, you multiply the numerator and denominators um, horiz uh, horizontally or to the left, and the resulting fraction is the fraction in the lowest terms, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the following. Instructions are to reduce um, the given fractions, the given fractions <clears throat> to the lowest term. To the lowest terms. All right, so number uh, two, what if you have 15 over 25? If you're using the GCF approach, you can um, mentally determine what the GCF is, which is five in this case, and then just divide the numerator and the denominator by five, and that gives you the result, okay? But using the strategy up here, we're going to decompose these two. If you break down 15, let's do that over here, uh, using prime factors, 5 times 3. And then when you break down 25, you have 5 times 5. So there goes the prime factor decomposition of our numerator and denominator. So we'll have 3 times 5, let's write this properly, divided by 5 times 5. Okay, now you notice you have common factors in the numerator and denominator, namely 5. So you divide out, 5 goes here once, 5 goes here once. And then this now becomes 3 times 1 divided by 5 times 1. And your final answer is 3 over 5. That is a reduced form of 15 over 25. All right, let's take a look at another example. Now, what if you have 30 divided by 42, okay? Now, the GCF is not that obvious here. To some of us, it's pretty obvious that it's, um, in fact, 6. But let's go ahead and use the um, decomposition approach. So let's take out 30 and decompose it into a product of primes. What prime number goes into 30? Since it is even, we know 2 goes into it for sure. 2 goes into 30 15 times. And then 3 goes into 15 5 times. So 2 times 3 times 5 is the prime factor of the composition of 30. 42, we can take out 2 since it's even. That leaves us with 21. The sum of these two digits is set, uh, divisible by 3. So 3 goes into that 7 times. So we can now express this fraction as 2 times 3 times 5 divided by 2 times 3 times 7. Now, do you see the common factors in the numerator and the denominator? 2 goes here once, 2 goes here once, 3 divided 3 once, and 3 divided 3 once. All right, so those are the common factors. Your final answer is simply 1 times 1 times 5 and in the denominator, 1 times 1 times 7. And then you simply have 5 over 7 as the reduced form of 30 over 42. All right, now we're going to go over um, some examples of converting fractions to decimals. But before we do that, let's go over the strategy for converting fractions to decimals first. So first thing you want to do, um, if you're given an improper fraction or a proper fraction, if you want to convert it to decimal, you want to first express the fraction in the standard division notation. Okay, you take the numerator and place in the division bar, and the denominator um, goes outside to the left. All right, there's a common saying, the top dog goes in the dog house. So that just helps you remember to always put the numerator into the division bar um, or the dog house. And then the denominator is going to be your divisor. And after setting it up like that, you simply apply the regular long division algorithm. Keep on going until your result or quotient terminates, repeats, or reaches the specified number of decimal places indicated in the problem. Now, if you have a, a um, mixed number, all you do is simply convert the fractional part into decimal and then add it to the whole number, all right? And that will be your final result. 
Now, uh, let's take a look at some examples. Instructions are to convert the following. Two decimals. All right, so problem number five, we're number five right now. What if we have um, three over five? Now, how do we convert three over five to um, decimal? We just have to write it in the standard long division notation. So the numerator goes inside and then the denominator goes outside to the left. How many times is five going to three? Five doesn't go into three, so we'll put a decimal point, and then we place a zero behind the three, just like we do in our standard long division notation. Five goes into 30 six times. Six times five, 30, zero, so it terminates right here. So this tells us that three over five is equal to 0 0.6. Okay, number six, what if we were to convert two over seven uh, to decimal up to three places? Okay, basically the, the thousandth place. Okay, so the same procedure here on um, the top dot two goes in the dog house, a division bar, and then the denominator goes outside. How many times does seven go into two? It doesn't go, so you put a decimal point. Two is too small. Put a 20. Seven goes into 20 twice because two times uh, seven is 14. And then you subtract. This is just your standard long division algorithm. You have six, put a zero. How many times does 7 go into 60? If you do a multiplication um, table mentally, 7 times 7 is 49, 7 times 8 is 56, 7 times 9 is 63, which is too big, so we back up to 8 and use 56. Subtract, we have 4, 0. How many times does 7 go into 40? 7 times 6 is 42, that's too big. 7 times 5 is 35, that's perfect. 7 times 5, 35, subtract 5. Well, we're to go to three decimal places, so um, we have to just do it one more time to see if we're rounding up or if we're going to uh, round down and truncate, okay? So let's see. Um, just add a 0 behind the 5. 7 times 7 is 49, that's perfect. Subtract. This... Um, this is, is a non-terminating decimal, okay? But we're going to stop here because we already have a digit behind um, this desired place value, okay? So 0 0.2857, we are rounding to three decimal places or the thousands place. So let's just divvy, up, divvy it up. So the question is, are we going to carry one over or carry zero? Well, since seven is five or greater, we're going to have to carry one, right? We're rounding up and set this to zero. So um, two over seven is 0 0.2862, three decimal places. This is an approximation, okay, to three decimal places. All right, so for one last example, let's convert a decimal into a fraction. Well, that is very, very straightforward. No complications there whatsoever. So take a look at this. Let's convert convert um, 0 0.25 to a fraction. Okay, so we have 0 0.25. Now, this is how you go about converting decimals to fractions. You simply divide by one, okay? So now, how many times do I have to move my decimal point to make this decimal a whole number? The answer is twice, right? So we move it one, two. So what? how does that affect the denominator? In order not to change the problem, whatever you do to the numerator, you do the same thing to the denominator, move it decimal place two places to the right, 
and add your zeros. Okay, so this becomes 25 over 100. Now to finish it off, we can reduce. There are two ways we can reduce. Remember the strategy we used earlier? Let's go ahead and use it here. If we decompose 25 into prime factors, using a factor tree, you will have 5 times 5. And if you decompose 100, you have 5 times 5 times 2 times 2. So what you do now is cancel or divide out common factors. 5 divides 5 once. 5 divided by 5 once, 5 divided by 5 once, 5 divided by 5 once. So you have 1 times 1, oh snap, sorry about that, 1 times 1, 1 times 1 divided by 1 times 1 times 2 times 2. Your final answer is 1 over 4, okay? So 0 0.25 in fraction form is one fourth okay so that is the algorithm for converting decimals into fractions thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation we really appreciate it if you found this tutorial beneficial to you in your preparation of the for the accuplacer test please give us a thumbs up we'll appreciate your positive feedback if you have any questions um, about this the content of this tutorial or any math questions in the in your upcoming AccuPlacer test, just place it in the comment section below and we'll be glad to address it as soon as we can. Please subscribe to our channel for updates to other great math clips such as this. More clips can be found on math.serve.com slash test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.